Hi, everybody. I think people are joining us, which is so great. I think I've seen Matt, dear love. Matt, great to see you there. Um, I have to say, I did a webinar yesterday with Emmanuel Morrow in Japan. And I hate webinars because you can't, don't get to see people the inside of people's houses. So um, thank you for joining us this lunchtime. That's great. We've just been having a discussion about how Madrid is the worst hit in Europe in terms of COVID. Um, which is interesting and we feel like it's probably to do with all that kind of hugging and, and dancing so we might come on to talk about that in a bit um, but yeah first to say thank you very much for joining us this Friday lunchtime it's great to see so many of you thank you and um, I know that in fact I sadly missed the last session which Nick from Wallpaper did I know he did a great job and I got to swim 15k around the Isle of Scillies um, so I wasn't that sad about missing it, um, but I think it went really well. And just in case you don't know me, I'm Jemima Burrell and I'm the curator of Now Gallery and the cultural consultant for Greenwich Peninsula, which is why I'm here today. And I have to say that the last, the last talk I did for this series, um, for the Design District series, I was here. And now Greenwich Peninsula is open, the gallery, Now Gallery is open and people are coming around and it feels so good to be back with people coming into the gallery. And I have to say that I've been watching with sort of awe and glee that the design district is kind of coming together towards uh, in front of my eyes. And also as, a, as an artist who really struggles working from home, I, I have to find, say that I found lockdown really, really claustrophobic. And um, that the thought of there being 16 buildings designed by eight architects in London, in this special place, the design district, and that there's going to be a space for London's creatives, which is really being thought about in a really kind of acute way and is actually being made is so exciting. Um, and I've been talking to some really interesting, extraordinary architects these last months who are all making buildings for the, for the design district. And today is no exception. We have Jose Selgas and Lucia Cano this Friday lunchtime and um, so they're going to share some images shortly. Um, so it was also just to say to them which I hadn't mentioned was that I actually saw the arch for the food hall that they've designed um, going up it literally kind of went up before my eyes and um, today I mean not not today yesterday so that was really great to see that it really is it's really happening we are actually getting one of their amazing buildings so that's really good and I also was thinking about that this is really what is exciting about architecture that you can see the plans and you can see the models, but it's not until the real thing arrives that the concept really becomes apparent. So yeah, we're really looking forward to seeing the cladding and seeing how bright it's gonna be. So this is the seventh talk in this series. Um, and it's really been a joy to, to learn how the design district is bringing together a plethora, I mean, I was trying to think of a collective noun for architects. If anybody knows a collective noun for architects, will they please put it on the chat? But I was thinking maybe a pride of architects would be the most um, useful uh, sort of analogy. So, th so these architects are coming to Greenwich Minutes, so they're coming to London. Um, so I don't know if you know the format for this talk, but we, I've come up with about eight questions, um, but we're gonna, I'm gonna ask those. But at the end, we really want you to be involved. So please, 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 it's kind of, you feel like you're in a vacant space here and that um, there's no one out there. So chat, um, get on the chat, ask questions. We would really love you to be involved. Um, so I think Victor is gonna be the person who's sharing the screen. So if he goes too fast or too slow with the, the slides, I'm going to be beating him over the head with a stick. Um, so Victor, thank you very much. If I remember correctly, we've got sort of images of the design district to start off. So um, I would, I just wanted to say, I suppose, that I was looking through images of your work and it really seems that your buildings are both joyful, but they're also lighthearted. Um, and they're, they seem also to be um, sort of complex and thoughtful. And so I just wondered if you maybe could talk through, because I know you've done, You've done the food hall, but you've also done a workspace as well, a workspace building. And I wondered if you could talk about colour in relation to these works as well. So, Victor, do you want to go for it and show us some images? Go for it, Jose. Tell us about the food hall, which I saw going up yesterday. Well, let me, uh, well first of all, uh, hello to everyone. And thank you for, for having us here. Thank you for, for leading this, Emina. 
and I want to first of all to present Victor. Victor, Victor Jimenez is is our is, is the boss in this in this project. He's leading these these uh, these two buildings for the, the design district, and probably he could answer much better and he could explain much better than we can or both projects. But well, I guess uh, if if we are doing as you said uh, we are starting with the, the first portico of of this building of the the food market and and we were jo uh, yesterday we were joking about that that image that looks like the entrance of the of the of a fair of the seville fair you know the feria de abril so for us it's kind of very spanish feeling right now with that portico up there and so and it's part of a but it's kind of a, a good uh, relation uh, to about a good connection to the to the to the feast to the to a party to because this is about that no this building I, I guess is about that about how it's going to be the, at the core of the of the design district and it's going to be for that it's going to be to kind of it's going to be the entrance and where you and you are going to mix uh, where you are going to mingle with other people and where you are going to I guess meet everyone else. I, th I think that is probably key to say that um, for those who haven't been to it or sort of seen, oh, here we go, that it is in the, it's the centre. So you have all the other buildings around yeah. and it's the, it's the heart of the place. Yeah, yes, as you can see here in this one. So it's in the, in the main plaza, right? So it's, it's kind of that's at, at the end, we, we thought in this place like a cover plaza. Uh, for everyone, it's just uh, we have these kind of ETFE bubbles covering the whole space because at the end you have a lot of rain in, in London, but otherwise, why well, they say so, and so I don't want to be rude. Well, no, but I was also thinking about the mercados that you have in Spain. You have covered markets in Spain. That's a, oh, that's course, a yeah, but, but this I, is, is almost like, you know, it's a, it's a why not have it covered? It's kind of sensible. Yeah. But it's not, I mean, we were thinking in the beginning is more like a market, more than a market, like a plaza, no? A place where you can go and you, because it's in the center of the, of the, of the square, no? Of the main square of the, of the art district. So it's, it's that, at the end, it's just a, a place, it's an agora where you, you can meet people and where you can receive people. So, and then you, you have some stores to have some food and also to go up and, and, and enjoy the, the place. We, we planted some trees inside as well in the plaza, as, as you can see a little bit in these, these images. Uh, some trees, because we, we thought in that space like something outdoor space, no? because it's, the whole thing is just to cover as light as possible that space and to, and to be aware of, of, of the whole district from there, no? to be aware of the weather, of the, of the situation, of the people working. So maybe you are having a, a little burger here you can see someone, someone else from your, from your office as well, no? from, from the inside. So that was the, a little bit the idea of the whole space to make it completely transparent, completely open, completely, uh, very less architecture, let's say. No? So let's... And you also have that inside outside thing, which we might talk about later, but the whole idea of having trees inside the building then somehow connects the building to the outside. This, this, you always seem to be talking about that in your work. Yeah, yeah. So let's go. And then if you want, this connects, I think, this building to the next one that we are doing for the design district, which is this one that is an office building instead. But at the end, in the back of the building, we thought the back is the main. So the, what you see in the left is the, is the, main, the main facade of the, of the project. But on the contrary, we decided to enter from the back. So in the back side is a greenhouse as well. So it's connecting both sides, the, the main square to this, this big, uh, what well, is this open also a space and like also very green connecting the, to the other side of, of, of the design district. So at the end, I guess our main, uh, our main, uh, feedback or our main idea or our main, main gift to the, to the design district is about that, no? about giving those two spaces that are almost outdoor spaces. So there is no differences in, in between. So you, you have the feeling that you are outside, being inside at the same time.
and also common space. I mean, space where people can just be and relax in relation to quite studio space. The other buildings obviously are all studio space where people have their individual space. This is about creating space where people can meet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is more like a gift, no? Or the, like, a, it's an extra. I mean, I mean yeah. it's a present for, for the city or for, for the rest of the, of the design district, I think both, both the spaces. And of course, they are green, they are open, and they are for everyone, yeah, to, to come in and to experience that, that spaces. No. And so, so really, just to sort of continue from that uh, theme that obviously we're always talking about, which is how do you make the perfect or the ideal space for, for a creative? And we also had a the design district had a, um, an interesting discussion about uh, Zoom or room, and I think we're all dealing with that at the moment. You know, can a Zoom call actually give you all the information that you need, or do you need to get into a room with someone to really be able to be creative? Um, and I know that you did. Obviously, these are. I think these are all from your work with Second Home, um, yeah. and I was interested in the connection of actually. You know, if you were to have three things that you think make a perfect working environment, what would those be? Or if you could just talk around when you were thinking about making these working environments, what was key to you? Well, I think there is, I don't know if there's three. At the end. Yeah. No. Well, sorry, I, we were talking before that I am talking the most, but not because I want, I don't really like to talk too much, but it's because Lucia, I mean, uh, her English is, is worse than mine. Yeah. And probably, uh, well, you can explain something about this or you want to explain no, no, try no. to explain no, something no, in no. spanish or no. and i know what it's like it's like my spanish my spanish makes me sound like i'm really stupid and i don't want to speak in spanish because you know i i understand lucia where you're at but please do if you feel like you want a button please do okay no not, not, not in that moment <laughs> continue so, please thank anyway, you anyway so thank um, you. i think uh, 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 a work space, I think, is kind of. In fact, when when these guys from Second Home they approach us, they were approached with this idea of of with the name Second Home, right? So trying to so they wanted a, a space where to work that where you feel at home, because typically uh, the the spaces where you work, they are not. I mean, you don't have. Uh, well, we did a big a big project in in Sweden. Um, uh, Victor, una quest is encuesta. How do you say? Uh, a quest? No, no, question? you you say, um, it's como si una encuesta, Victor, uh, in English. Uh, well, they did a, an interview to everyone working in the for the city. Oh, a qu questionnaire, a questionnaire, yeah, a big questionnaire about every, everyone working in that in that building. In that for the city was a building for I mean a lot of people was a 60 60,000 square meters I mean they, they plan to move the city the, the whole city to to that building and they did this this questionnaire to everyone working in that building and was a question that for us was super important because at the end everyone was more or less happy with the ambience with the temperature with the light with whatever but at the end there was a question that and do you show and do you bring your family, friends, or your friends or your family to your, to the place where you work? And kind of 95% of the people say no. Mm. And we didn't understand that. So why you don't work, Why do you bring your the people that you like to the people to the place where you work? For us, it's kind of a. I mean, it should be. I mean, they should come, come, come to visit me and uh, come to have a beer with me here in my place, and then we go somewhere else. But I mean, so. And we did that project in that sense as well, thinking on, on that question um, about a place where you really, and what's funny because in Second Home, most of the people used to bring the family during the weekends or some friends after working, just to show them around or just to have, to have a beer with them or to have a meeting with, with, uh, with some friends of some family. So, and I think it's, it's, it's normal because it's the, place where you spend most time of your work. So it's completely, should be like that. You no, know? every, every place where you work should be like that. So for us, it's, that is one of the things for, uh, for, uh, for the perfect work uh, station is being just proud of the place where you're working in. And the second one for us is just the people. 
So you want a, a place where you can meet people, where you can just, as for example, this, this image is from Lisbon. So the main entrance in, in, in this, this uh, office for, for Second Home is just a bar. It's just a place where you meet other people, where you can just, uh, just meet new people. You don't need to, so I think this is, but this is probably one of the things that most of the offices right now are moving to. You know, in that direction to to yes to have more the possibility not to have a, an enclosed space but more like open areas where you can meet a lot of people and we, you can yes discover new things and discover new ideas discover new 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 faces I would like to say that it is slightly a double-edged sword in that certainly people make workplaces comfortable they make sure that there are sandwiches in fridges and that you don't have to go out to the outside world to get your lunch and you stay working so i think that yeah you're it's really fantastic when your workplace is comfortable and i grew up with architects and i know my mum was an architect and i know a lot of architects and i know how much time you spend in your in you know in your workspace as architects but also that kind of incredible all the architects i know they have a very generous attitude that you know you can turn up on a Saturday and they may be working and they'll have you'll have lunch and and it's a quite a kind of it's a it's a very interesting sort of bleeding between work and and home life that I imagine you also have because your your studio is is part of your home, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's connected to our home. Yeah. At the end we we really work at home at the end, you know, between the, the this is our office and we are moving ah. from, from this part to our, to our house. And so we have both connected. And that's, I guess, is, is, yeah, is, is part of the, of the, of the thing, because as, as we work at home, we, and we can, well, it's, it's, it's funny because sometimes the people doesn't know what is in this, I mean, in, in doesn't feel like an office, but also our home doesn't feel like a house. So when you enter in these spaces, it's kind of, well, they are not very sure what, what is that, no? And uh, we love that feeling also, well, in this case, you know, our office is more, the whole idea was to work re related to the nature that we, we, we had around in that, in that area, in this, in, this, in this neighborhood where we are. So we were, the whole office was about that, yes, having the relationship with, with nature, which is in most of, of, of our projects, and probably we will talk about that later. I love those leaves, they're so beautiful, the different colored leaves. They're oh, just... they're coming now as well, so then we are almost in the same moment. Yeah, well, the problem with the leaves is... is <laughs> the, 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 the land on the glass. <laughs> no, it's completely covered, <laughs> the whole... The whole Office is, is full of, of leaves and and you need to clean them at the end <laughs> because we don't have that, that that much rain in in Madrid. Nature is wonderful but problematic. Yeah, it doesn't exactly oh. do it doesn't do what you wanted to do all the you know all the same all the time. It's beautiful always, but there is a moment you know that that beauty uh, becomes garbage. So so you need to clean them. So mm -hmm. there is there is moments for for nature as well. And so we're going to move on to another project, I think. Um, now this, I, I saw some very beautiful photographs of this um, and there was quite an interesting, so this is a, 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 I'm sure you will talk more about it, but it's a, it's a, 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 a um, well, what I was curious about was when you built it at Louisiana, so you built this structure at Louisiana, did you always know it was going to go to Nairo Nairobi? Look, it's, 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 uh, well, this project is, is more like a personal thing. Uh, I mean, when we, we were doing another project in, 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 in Kenya, in, in Turkana, in the north of Kenya. So we were doing a vaccination center, which is right now could be very popular, the, the idea of a vaccination center. So doing that because malaria, they're, they're, they're super important. So they needed a place where to vaccinate people around. So, so I'm going there to build the, the thing and to visit with, with some students when in that period, in that moment we were teaching. It's the only, the only time in our life we were, we were teaching. We were in, in the MIT and we went with, with some students from the MIT to, to visit that area in Turkana. So then, uh, 
very good friend of us, which is Ivan, Ivan Ban, he told us you should go to Kibera also. You should visit Kibera with the students, which is very, very interesting. And he gave us some, some relations, some, some connections in there. So then we visit a school in Kibera. And the school was totally destroyed and in, in really bad shape as, I mean, as is the whole Kibera, but that the school, I mean, was full of kids and surrounded by garbage. Well, it was a total disaster, was a really, well, then I call after that visit, I call Ivan, I told him, why you told me to visit this, this school? You want us of, for sure to do something, of course. I said, yes, we want, yeah, let's do something with, with those kids and let's, let's try to improve a little bit the, the situation of that school. So, and then when we had a chance that was from the Louisiana Museum in Denmark, they proposed us just to replicate the building in, in Turkana. And we told them, okay, uh, we are going to replicate the system, which is like a scaffolding system of construction, very simple and very cheap. But we are going to do the project in another location. We are going to do a school for Kibera, and we are going to mount it in your nice garden in, in, in Louisiana, in the garden in Louisiana. It's a really beautiful, I don't know if you, you've been there, but it's really a yeah, beautiful museum. I have been there, it's really Absolutely amazing. magnificent. And so we mounted the school, knowing that it was a school, and knowing that this is the real location. And so we, we did a, a school for this location, and we just mounted in the in the garden of, of the museum. So and then they paid for the, let's say, for the materials and for the, for the whole thing. And then when the... The, the show was was finished. The, the exhibition was finished. Then we dismounted, the, dismantled the the school, and we moved it back here. Uh, was a really uh, amazing experience working with the people. Of course, we got local people to to re to reassemble the, the the whole thing, and, and was really really fun and amazing. But you can see the and um, was well the whole situation about this is yes a very it's just a school, very simple, very, very, as you can see, with, with the scaffolding system, we just, that's, that was the lot. We, in, in, in Kibera, in, in, in Nairobi, it rains a lot, much more than you can think. So we decided to cover the whole courtyard with uh, polycarbonate, with this polycarbonate white, that where you can get the light, but you are protected from the sun, which is very strong at the same time. So it's more or less the, the whole project was about that. And we did this, this project with three, three former students at, at MIT that they called and sent hello, hello everything. So and this is well, the first days of, of the, when they started the, and Ivan was coming also for the, for the, for the opening of the office, of the, of the school. And I suppose for, for just looking at these photographs. I mean, I, I studied anthropology, and so there is something that I suppose I find uncomfortable about, you know, you, we as Westerners, we go in there with this fabulous idea of building a school and we put it in the space and um, everything, away, you know, you see the photographs around it and it's, you know, there, there are no, there's no drains, there's no nothing. Um, and you're just literally kind of putting a plaster onto a, a situation which is kind of, you know, ex extraordinarily difficult for the people living there. Um, and I suppose my question, I don't really, it's not even a question, it's also how has it, how has the school weathered? And have you had, have you been back there to see how it's working? Because do these, do these projects that are just kind of, you know, put in, do they last? Well, I think was, I mean, we, we knew that this is Kibera, you know, at the end, so whatever, there is no spare in this, for example, whatever piece of, of, uh, of, of polycarbonate that we have spares, so the, the sheets that we couldn't use, they, I mean, we gave to everyone and they disappear immediately. So you have, so immediately they, they, they have a news. But I think that they, we knew about the, the complication of, of, of the place and about at the end, the drainage is, is one of the main things, not having any drainage in the whole area of, of Kibera. So what we did at least, because in the former school, you, you had in the middle of the courtyard was uh, just the, the drainage, all the, the sheet of the, the neighbors were, were running in the middle of the school. 
So what we did, I think that the best thing that we could do in this case was just to create a new drainage. So at least in the courtyard, you don't have any more <laughs> the drainage, just crossing that. And also in the street, if, if, if you can go back, uh, maybe there is a photo from the main entrance and you can see, yeah, here, maybe you can see, well, there's these, these guys just in front of the, but there is a drainage, but just in front of the entrance of the school, there is no, there's no drainage. So we created this part without, uh, I mean, we spend it a lot of the, of the budget in that drainage, which is the, I think is the, the best thing we can do. We, we haven't been back in, in there. I know people, so they, we did this project with a, with a local architect, of course, with that he's, he's back and also his friend, a very close friend of him was the guy running the school. Then this guy moved to another place and I know that the, the director of the exchange and everything has changed. And I mean, also we, we heard things about the, I mean, because the problem with this school is really is too fancy, I mean, for the area, even if you cannot think about that, even, even if it's, but the people was amazed about the, the beauty of the space. They wanted to do whatever. So they, they offer us to open a coffee in this in this school, they offer us to open a yoga center. They offer us in, in when we were working there. So I think it could be used for many things for the for the neighbor. But at the end, uh, the reality is that is that a school and there is an, an owner in the school. So we did this for free to them. But there is an owner and they take care of the of the thing. So it's a school, of course. Now it's much more dirty. And now it's, it's kind of becoming more part of Kibera. It's covered with dust, but... Yeah. Uh, but that's, isn't that the nature of being architects? I'm sure that, you know, if James Sterling went back to the Claw Foundation now, um, he'd be like, ah, it's not the same, the color is different. You know, I think that you have to, you know, you have to give birth to your babies and you have to let them go. I think that that's what architects definitely have to do. So I imagine but it's an interesting question. And I'm sure, I mean, you know, education is unbelievably important, but so are drains. And I'm sure it kind of, for you, it must have, it must have brought up lots of questions for you. No, they, of course. I mean, they, there were more questions in the, in the beginning when we went to Turkana in the other project that we did in Kibera, in, sorry, in, in, in Kenya. So, because that was more going to a region working in for, uh, for an ONG and I mean, it was a big discussion in the MIT if we should go there and build something for these guys. And when you visit that, and when you, visit, you, you understand the situation of the people and how they need to be vaccinated. So you say, okay, there is no question. So let's do the building, that's it, let's do the project. And in this case, if you visit the place, you cannot just do, okay, that's fantastic. And you, so you need to do something. And we try to do our best. So let's say no one, I mean, there is no government involved in this thing. There is no public money at all in this, in this well, unless the, the, the Luciana, the Luciana Museum, but the Luciana Museum at, at the end, they pay for a pavilion. So, and then we move that pavilion to this place, but at the end, so it's, and so you, at the end, you need to do something in these cases. I don't know if it's, it was the, was a good move, a good idea, was a good project or not. We, we, we made what, what we could and I think, I think that there were a lot of people happy with this, a lot of kids happy with this, and a, a lot of kids, at least they, they were not wet and they were more clean, so at least it's something. No, that's a good thing. Well, we're going to go from the sublime to the sublime. Um, if you could go on to the next slide. Next slide, because I realise actually we're about halfway through and we've got quite a lot to... So um, another pavilion, quite different, uh, as I think, uh, well, I, 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 I live very close to here. Well, not very close, but close enough. Um, so I remember your colour burst literally arriving like a, like this sort of fantastic um, bomb of colour. And I wondered um, at a, you know, working in a park, instead of working in a kind of building site or amongst other buildings, whether this gave you a freedom and how you came up with the idea for this, this wonderful piece of, of um, sort of ecstasy nestling in the serpentine. Well, uh, what is funny is that 
we were doing at the same time the Luciana Pavilion, the school in Quivera, than this one. Exactly at the same time, which was very funny and very opposite in some way, because this is just for, you know, for London, just for fun, just for, uh, let's say, something related to art or something, and, and something much more different. If you go back to the, 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 first, the, the other slide, Victor, in this one, you can also understand much better how we work in, the, in this project. So at the end, for us, every project is an opportunity for whatever. No? The Kibera was an opportunity, or the Luciana Pavilion was an opportunity to do a school in Kibera. And for us, this was an opportunity to experiment with, with a material that we, we have been working a lot at the CTFE. And is the, in fact, the, the market uh, in, in the art district, in the design district, uh, is, is, is the same material, is ETFE. So I, in this one, I hope that was the case. I hoped that that was going to be the case, that it was in the same material because it's beautiful. It's sort of iridescent, isn't it? It's beautiful. Well, in this case, it's more a test, uh, an experiment about how you can use the, this material in many different cases. Because in the beginning, we were, we were thinking of, of other options, other materials, but at the end, we realized that this was the only material we could use. Because even if this is a park, it's a royal park, and there is a big rule. I mean, there is a, a lot of rules in, in, in London, of course, but more in a royal park. So you need to fulfill all the London rules, but also, I mean, regulations, but also the park, the Royal Park regulations. At the end, you cannot use a fire, it has to be completely fireproof, the whole pavilion. And the only fireproof plastic that is in the market right now is this one, the CTFE. So it doesn't burn. So, so that's why we start, started to use, then we discovered that, and then we said, okay, let's focus in, in one material and let's do the whole pavilion with that material. So we play with the shapes, we play with the colors, we play with the reflections, we play with the stripes and the, and the different possibilities to, to work with that. And we just create this piece that at the end, also you go back for some, the, the aerial slide, Victor, please. So you see that it's related also to the nature around. So you see that the main entrances are touching almost the, the main trees around and the, all the entrances are related somehow to the trees and to the garden around. So the shape of the pavilion is related to the place where, where it's, it's done. Looking, looking at your work, if you just sort of look at your work very like, like this, <laughs> um, it seems like, you, you know, you have an incredible palette, but there is a very, seems to often go back to an orange, uh, uh, not so much a green, but you have some fundamental co colours that are important to you. Do you think that's true? Do you think orange is like something, a colour which is particularly important? Or do you think that actually you use a, you know, the palette is just there and you take what you want at that particular point? Well, color is, is, is the problem with the color is that you cannot use whatever color you want. We did in this project. I mean, in this project, we tested all the colors we wanted. So there, 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 there were no, no limits at all in color in this one, because we wanted, in fact, to test all of them together and to, what, to see what happened with everything. The only thing in, in, in white is the floor in this project, also because we wanted that effect on the floor of the color on the floor. So, but, so this is the only one that, for example, you could see more green or more well, colors that you cannot see in other buildings that when you are inside, for example, because at the end, the, the color is just physics, just very simple, because it's just uh, how you perceive uh, and the light. So how the, the light reflects in a, in a surface and that gives you a color, but that gives you a sensation. So as we, we've been studying a lot and we've been working a lot with colors since the beginning. So we know that there are a few colors that are at the end adapted to the, to the use in architecture. So, I mean, you can, of course, white is super important to have more light. Uh, if you use black, it's gonna be the contrary. So the, when the light is gonna disappear. So when you use black, you need to be very careful with that. Or if you use gray as well, it's absorbing a lot of light. So when you use green, the effect on your system as well as your, your sensations are completely different when you're using red or whatever. 
So at the end, there is few colors that you can use, but also there is few colors that you can use, for example, in the floor. So in this case, we wanted to use white, but typically we never use white on the floor, of course, because it's very dirty. So it gets dirty immediately. So typically we, we use another colors in the floor that they, they last longer. I mean, you need to clean at the end less the floor if you, you, you are using orange, for example. Orange is a mid color that works perfectly for, for just for, for cleaning or poses. So at the end, always there is a reason in why you use a color or not. And we, we test a lot colors and we, we work a lot with them. And we, let's say we typically, we used to say that we are color blind so that we don't really give a shit about color, but we test a lot on them and we work a lot on them at, at, until the point that we have a decision on that. So let's say this, is, this color is just a, for us, it's another layer in a project when you, uh, that you need to use at some point that unfortunately a lot of people they don't they don't use so they don't know how to use so i don't know i mean probably the people ask us about color because it's not as as used as it should be i mean if in if in every building there should be a lot of color you you will never ask about that you will ask about other factors in our projects and never about color but as the people is typically they don't use as much color as many colors as, as they can, that you can use a lot at the end. You, you, you need to decide, right? So if you need to paint a floor or you need to paint some walls, you need to paint the structure, you need to decide a color. Um, it should be, I mean, if there is a decision there that you need to, um, you need to take. Um, what we do is, is to work a lot with that, that's it. But I think it's interesting that you, yes, you don't want to be defined, or, you know, the architects that, do beautiful color you don't want to be defined like that but again I think it's the fact that different shapes make different colors work in a different way so you can't take the color and keep it separate from the shapes that you're making because you know if you're doing a long thin shape it might look better in green if you're doing a big fat shape it might look better in another color and so you, as architects you're constantly working with those things I think yeah absolutely but also constantly working with the people that is living or moving in that building. So it depends on the use of the building. Also, we'll, we will, you will need a, you will have a need for that. I mean, probably you need more. I mean, at the end, the color that we use the most in whatever building is white. Maybe you don't realize about that, but most of the of the walls or or most of the, the we use white everywhere. Not on the floor, as I said, because you cannot use white on the floor because it get, gets immediately dirty, but and probably not in the ceiling because also you can, well, it, it creates a, a another space if you test another things. But at the end, it depends on the, on the use of the building, depends on where you are, depends on what you do. So you, you can use one color or, or other, but well, we don't care. I mean, if, if they call us I mean, that the architects of the color or the fancy colors, we, we are happy with that. I mean, the people love color at the end. We know, we understood that, I mean, people, not maybe not architects, not critics or whatever, but normal people, common people, they use, they, they love the use of color. They, they love to, to have something different. They love to, to be in a place that is more, uh, I mean, if you go to the malls, the, to, for example, in Kibera, uh, they get uh, uh, some color. It's amazing the use of color everywhere. So they, they will never paint in, in gray or, or, I mean, if they got a, a tin of gray, they will use it, of course, but if they can decide colors, so they can use whatever. They, they are in the same way, like color blind. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you can use, uh, we are the same. Mm. Uh, well, as, a, as, a, as I said, as, a, as someone whose mother, uh, mother was an architect, I grew up with a white terrazzo floor, which was always dirty. Um, so this actually leads on to my next question, which was, I'm wondering what um, images, uh, images you've got for the next question, which, which was, this was really about being a team. Um, and obviously this is in fact, the first opportunity I've had, to, we've, I've interviewed a couple of other um, uh, people who work together with their, their, with their partners in partnership um, as architects and as husband and wife. And this is the first opportunity I've got to speak to both husband and wife. And then I can't speak to Lucia, which makes me wish my Spanish was better, not that your English was better. But um, I suppose I was curious because 
yeah, how do you how do you work together? And um, do you have different qualities that complement each other? I and mean, obviously it's lucky that Jose speaks English. I imagine that's quite important. So I really wanted to find out from Lucia what qualities you bring to the practice as a woman or as a person or as an architect. Um, and yeah, how do you divide the design practice between you? And I don't know what images you're going to put to this. I'm quite interested to see. Bueno. Is, is the most difficult question no? <laughs> the, because it's difficult to, to explain no is I think it's easy the relation is super easy everything um, comes very natural uh, we know decide we are going to do that or this so is we, we start everything together and uh, we are a team, no? We are Salga Sami, but we have a, a people that working with us and everyone work together, no? It's no, we can do to say, I, I do, Salgas do that or me do that. It's, we are part of the team. And in the team, there is a ladies, a, a boys, a, there is it's a mix. And well, I think well, everyone has a, a, a things to a voice, yeah. a voice. voice, or a role, a role maybe as well as a voice. Yeah, yeah. Different different people are good at different things, and it doesn't matter whether they're a boy or a girl or a man or a woman. It's just that different different people are good at different things. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 uh, sorry, say again, say again, again. That that everybody has their roles it doesn't matter whether you're a, you're a man or a woman it's no. it's what you're good at no no uh, we mix everything we work in one part of the project and no cada uno trabaja in in, in different well, part what, of the project uh, and we, we i can explain yeah <laughs> i can explain what Lutia is trying to say <laughs> So what we do, I mean, what we, I mean, we are a small Sorry. office, you know, we are, I mean, we are big projects, but in a small office at the end, we have, of course, we, we collaborate with many other people in other areas, in other fields, but in our office, it's kind of, everything is mixed. And Victor, that is, is here, he can tell. I mean, there is no roles. I mean, there is no boss or people, and know, you work in this place. No, we mix everything. And you, you, you will pass from one project to other like in just in, in, in two minutes because we need, no, sorry guys, forget about this one because now we need to finish this, whatever, this facade for this one. Or then no, we go back to this one for, so everyone is mixed in every project and everyone has a voice in every project. Everyone, so there is no really, there is no roles, divided roles, so as, as you can have in many other offices that you are, okay, I'm the competition guy. I'm only doing competitions, no, not at all. In our office, everyone is doing no competitions, uh, drawings, whatever type of drawings, giving ideas, starting from scratch, or fi finalizing or doing the last detail of, of whatever project. So everything is, is really mixed because we found out that that is super important for us because everyone is, is like active you know, in, at every moment. So no one is kind of just, yes, okay, I know how to do and I'm doing this way and always doing that way, no. So because immediately, immediately you need to change to another thing. Let's say it's like a team, probably it's, it's, it's a stupid thing because I mean, it's like a football team. I mean, the, the goalkeeper is, 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 is passing to the midfield and then he's going back to the defense and then he's going. So probably that's a disaster and doesn't make sense, but we, we we find out that that is, is what's more rich for the projects and we had more chances to find or to, or to experiment new things in that way and, and to discover things that we were never, uh, probably you, I mean, if you are a, a goalkeeper, probably you will, you will, <laughs> I don't know, be in a, a midfield in another way. If you are another thing, I don't know, you, you change immediately the, your, your ideas and your, if you are always in the same position, you train in that position and you are always doing the same thing. And for us, that is very boring. And at the end, it's very but boring for the people working there, but also for the projects and for the... I, I like a lot that you, as a, obviously a Medrelienio, 
and you've you've used um, football as an analogy, and obviously we will all be cheering for um, Real Madrid. But um, we have now got ten minutes. I'm actually aware that we haven't got many questions. If you want to ask a question, get it in quickly because we've actually got loads of slides to still go through, and I'd love it. Actually, I've got two more questions, and I'm just going to just sort of go like this, and then we'll go through the slides and kind of get through as many of them as we can in the next ten minutes. And if a question comes up, brilliant. And if it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, but really, one was about nature. So how? nature is so important in your work. And the other one really was the importance of light, because I just remember seeing the difference between your pavilion at the Serpentine in the evening and how it kind of lit up like a fantastic iridescent bug. And then in the day, it was something different. So if you could talk about nature and light, and then if some, if some questions come up on the chat, we'll do them. If not, then we're very happy just for you to talk. For nature, for nature, I think we, we brought this, this, this is probably the last period that we, we finished in, in, in last, last year. And this is second home in, in, in Hollywood, in, in, in Los Angeles. <clears throat> and this is, you go back to the first slide, Victor, probably you, you yeah, well, maybe this is a bit too far. But amazing, amazing. Yeah, so the main thing in this project was to create a, where you see the, the, the yellow bulb, the yellow pieces, the yellow pots, is that that was a building and a parking lot. And well, we thought the other building that is the white one, we, we needed to preserve that, that one because it belongs to Paul Williams that is the first Afro-American architect working in Los Angeles. So we preserved that building and we decided just to create a garden for that building. But in the middle of the garden, there is a lot of offices, which is the yellow piece. But if you walk around, and please, Victor, go to another slide. Maybe you can, yes, yeah, the one on the left, you see. You walk around, you feel the garden. You feel that you are working in a garden. And I think the main thing in this one that's, is that in, on top of a parking lot, which is still there, uh, we planted uh, almost uh, 7,000 plants and trees and, and, and some, and looks like now also is, is taking care very well of, of COVID because it's the, the few places in, in Los Angeles where the people still is working there because I think it's that relation with nature but because you can work almost outside and you can be outside most of the time as well because the, the, of course the, the Los Angeles weather but as well because you have a garden and you have a different you can walk around so for us nature let's say is something I think is the only important thing in the uh, the only important thing and think both <laughs> things that we have in the office. Um, for example, doing this project, we were always saying that we don't give a shit about the how it's going to be these these bubbles of of uh, how they are going to be these offices. What we are super uh, keen is about the garden. So the garden is fundamental. We are going to do the garden. That's it. The rest we doesn't care. So it was a big fight because when you create a big garden on top of a parking, it's not easy and it's, not, it's, it's less complicated, it's more complicated in, in America where you have a lot of regulations. So and the people is super, super concerned about whatever you know, they are doing. So and then building a, a big, I mean, big garden on top of a parking lot that is not prepared for that. And can I just check that I imagine that they look like some kind of acacia trees? Are they acacia trees so that they're very good, that you're not going to have to water them all the time? Because I think that's another issue with nature at the moment. We're dealing with the fact that, you know, we're getting less and less rain. How do you, how do you make sure that that is part of your thoughts behind it? Courtyard, this is a Tipuana tree. Tipuana tree is a very, well, it's kind of a local, almost local. I mean, it's kind of, of, of that region. I mean, there is no local trees right now in, in Los Angeles. In fact, but we, we try to use as much as, as possible, as many as possible. In this case, this is, everyone is, is, is a Tipuana tree and they flower in, in yellow, which is very nice. And they have leaves the whole year long because this is this cordia, you can use the, cord, the cordia the whole year long. So for us, it was very important that both facts. Uh, but the rest of the garden is like more related to, I mean, we did a lot of projects with, with a lot of, different botanists and people that knows the local you know the local guys that they grow there perfectly but at the end the fact that when you need 7,000 trees and plants it's almost impossible to plant that 
So you just need to go to a nursery and, and, and let's say, how many trees of these you have? Well, I have 300. Okay, I take all of them. And then what? So then you go to the next one. And how many trees of those you have? No, I have no one of these, but I have these ones. Okay, I take all of them. So mm -hmm. it was a bit weird, but it was like that. At the end, we took too many. It was too complicated to plant all of them on place. And well, that was, was really fun and was the only concern for us. I mean, we were part of that. We were part of the planting. We planted a lot of trees by ourselves. And <laughs> Um, I'm aware you've got five more minutes. So, Victor, I don't know how many slides you've got, but you've got you've got to kind of move on a little bit, please, because we want to see the light that, that you mentioned about uh, artificial light. I guess you were talking. No? So, of course, I mean, night is super important in, in architecture because you are gonna you are gonna use the building most of the time during the night, or at least half of the time during the night, because in winter is is most of the time is is or in an indoor space is typically you use not artificial light. So for us, the use of light is, is fundamental. The use, the use of artificial light is, is fundamental. Um, how you use that, how is a building during the day and how that building tr is transformed. In this case, for example, this is ETFE, the whole building, which is transparent, so it's translucent. And then you use that just to show the building to the city. It's gonna happen in, in, in in the ones that we are doing for the design district. All of them. Where's this? Where was that building? This is in, in, in Placentia in Spain. This is an auditorium building. Go back and please, Victor, to the... This is in, in... Well, this building was in the middle of the landscape, as you can see, in the middle of, of kind of at the edge of the city. So, and they, that, that city should be expanding in the same horrible way that they, they, they used to do it. And just to you know, just flattening the landscape, flattening the everything. So what we did is just decide to create um, that bridge and putting that 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 building on on the landscape and not touching the landscape at all, the less as possible because that that's why it's, it's cantilevering and that's why it's very very high. So we decided just to preserve this 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 nature around that otherwise because there is a big land belonging to this building. Otherwise, I mean, the rest of the, I think the, this was a competition and the rest of the, the competitors, they were just flattening again the, that land and creating a, a urban space. So in this case, we just decided to, to preserve the nature that we, we thought was beautiful and we thought was, was the way to deal with that. And also we create a, a kind of a problem for the, for the city because now for them it's very complicated to, to keep going in, in the same way as they, they used to do. So right now they need to think more carefully about the, the future of, of, of the cities in that, in, that, in, that, in that sense. So anyway, in these buildings, as, as we are using ETFE, which is a translucent material, yes, in this case, it's just to get rid of 50% of, of the sun radiation and this is not transparent, this is more like a whitish uh, effect, so it's, it's tinted, uh, the, the material. So uh, we use that as a, as a lantern for the, for also for the city or for the, as, as we try to do most of the, so with, with a very normal conventional, conventional light that we have in all the stairs around the building, so we use that to light the, the city as well at the same time. So using an, an opaque uh, material, you cannot do that. But in this case, with uh, such a light material, is you can do that. So and in the art district, in the design district, we are going to do the same in, in both in both projects. Uh, so they're going to have that sort of luminescent quality, which is yeah, what we are need. using the inside of the building. You know, using the what you have inside, you are going to light the, the rest of the. So that's why we typically, we, we save a lot in, in outdoor lighting. Um, so it's two o'clock and um, I desperately want to see the skate park. So I'm just hoping that um, Victor can quickly go through, again, dealing with color and luminescence, your skate park. Um, do you want to talk very briefly and then we'll need to, to sort of wrap this up. But I had one question that had come in, which was, which is um, slightly a funny question, but um, someone asked, what was your favorite building in the design build, design district? 
out of all the other buildings, because obviously there are some seriously interesting architects, whether there was any other building that sort of struck you? Well, I, I think for us, I think it's what is is what strikes us is is the whole idea no? of the the whole situation of the, I mean the the group of of the compound of different buildings done by amazing architects, all of them, and the scale of the of the place. I think the really the project that the, they did in for the for the design district is is amazing. It's really it's really interesting, and I think all of them are are a thing, you know, so you cannot choose one of them, but it's, it's uh, this district at the end, it's a, it's a piece of, of the city that is going to be, I think it's going to be very fundamental for the future of London. I mean, it's like a, a way to do something, you know? it's kind of, there is another scale, not just skyscrapers and big, big scale and huge buildings, but it's amazing about the dimension of the buildings, because if you, you realize about that, I think only when you are going to be there because all the buildings are really small. All the buildings are, so that, that for us is fundamental in, in, in the future of, of, of the cities, just to work in another scale, work in another way with less, less, less huge scales and more a human scale. But I think it's quite interesting because it is huge. I mean, it's a monument. In a way, it's a monument to, to, to skateboarding. At this one, you mean? Yes. Well, well, this. <laughs> well, I, I wasn't talking about this one. I was talking. Sorry, about... I, I my um my com my Zoom completely cut out, so I missed the last bit. So I'm coming in oh, slightly blind. Oh well, no, I was talking about uh, the the design district. But anyway, this uh, this was a uh, yeah uh, uh, a building that we did in 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 Spain. And, uh, well, it was more like a well they call it factory movement because uh, a lot of people coming from different fields they ask for a building i mean when they were graffiters skaters uh, well dancers a lot of people that related to urban cultures they asked for a place where they could do that and so and we came with this this parade with uh, all of them to working together and then in the same way we use a very cheap the cheapest material because it's, these are really cheap uh, building. The cheapest material that is in the market we know right now because we we found out doing this one is is polycarbonate, uh, corrugated polycarbonate, and, and you can use it in many different ways. And you can light it from just from the inside of the building and you light the the outside. And they wanted that this is in Merida, which is very hot area, so they wanted a cover. Uh, to be protected from the sun and from the sometimes from the rain but mostly from the sun and also they want the light for the night because they use this a lot during the night because the during the day is super hot victor so, will you just will you, will you go back to um the sort of yeah one of that's that's great it's lovely to see it from in the it's lovely to see it from from the darkness to, to during the day and the way it works so well yeah well this is this was, I think this is, um, you know, I mean, we are architects sometimes and we need to, I mean, you, you get commissions, and, but I don't think this is a really, um, because I mean, this is very complicated. I mean, we are not very sure about this, this project because at the end you cannot put in a building the, uh, the urban culture, you know? So skaters, they, they are, they need to go around. They need to skate everywhere. So you cannot put in a place and yes, skate there forever. So, and also graffiters, how you can, well, I mean, you can climb here, of course, but you train a little bit here. It's like a training camp and then you can go whatever of, of the rest. You do train, uh, yeah, the younger generations and then you, they move to another places, I guess. It's, it's like more like that right now, but it's not like a, I think, I, I think what you're saying is true. It's like underneath the South Bank in London, there is a space that, has been used by skateboarders forever and no one said skateboarders can you know use here it's like they just come and congregate yeah. so i think but i think you can give people an opportunity 
to, to do interesting things, which you have here. But I also think that you give people an opportunity just to really enjoy architecture. And I think that th there is a certain kind of just joyfulness of, about your architecture, which it's really lovely to see something that, that makes you just want to smile. I mean, that as, as um, my, both my children climb, you know, they would think that was the best thing ever in the whole world. Um, so I think it's your imagination means that you give people an opportunity to work in a different way, to enjoy their, their working environment. So I have to say from us, we are so excited to see your buildings in the flesh. I now gallery is literally in, you know, two minutes away from the food hall. So I will be going and eating there every day. Um, so it's going to be a, you know, it's going to be have a wonderful opportunity to have a bit of Madrid, you know, a bit of Madrid sort of, you know, uh, uh, hugs um, and colour and vibrancy in, in London and at the Greenwich Peninsula. So I wanted to thank you both. I wanted to thank particularly Lucia for being there and listening to Jose talk. And I bet you've heard it all, all about a million times before. So you were very patient with him. I want to thank Jose for doing a great job. And I also want to say, come again. We've got another great architect on the 9th of October, same time, Friday on the 9th of October. And it's Adam Khan, so I think that will be very good too. But um, yes, to Madrid, my heart is still in Spain. Thank you so much for um, joining us. Our heart Thank is you. in London. Okay, same to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. See you soon. Thank you.